The rain may linger overnight as we head into tomorrow. But many of us are looking ahead to that wintry mix that is in our forecast. Jeff, what's the story? Yeah, I think a lot of our region is going to see a wintry mix come Friday, Friday night, even into Saturday. But before we get there, we have to set the whole stage with even colder air coming in and more moisture. And the question is, you know, the moisture when it gets down to the south, how long does it wait to come back in? Right now, we've seen pretty light rain, the northern and western half of the viewing area, southern and eastern sections basically sort of bisecting, have had a little bit more in the way of steadier precipitation right now holding at 43 degrees winds out of the south again if you didn't watch us earlier the high was 63 roughly we're waiting on official confirmation just after midnight then we fell to the 50s then we fell through the 40s and now we're continuing to fall through the 40s with that light rain falling out there and it's going to continue in the overnight hours it'll gradually begin to break up and move to the south toward morning and tomorrow we've been talking about this for a while best chance of rain is down in North Carolina. So cold tonight, just leftover rain showers. Tomorrow, rain showers will stay mainly south. Don't think we'll have much here, but much better, much higher odds of winter weather moving in for Friday and Saturday. Much of the area at least going to see a little bit of snowflake uh, action mixing in, and it'll probably even change over in a number of spots. We'll detail that coming up. All right, thanks, Jeff. We have more information tonight about a crash that caused a huge traffic jam during the rush hour in Newport News. Police tell us four vehicles were involved, including a school bus. This happened around 530 at City Center Boulevard and Jefferson Avenue. There were no students on board the bus, but firefighters had to rescue one person from their car. That person is at a hospital. We are told that person should be OK. No other injuries were reported and no word tonight on whether any charges are pending. A 12-year-old girl who was shot in Hampton is improving. Police say she's still in the intensive care unit. We brought you this as breaking news yesterday. The girl was shot inside a home on Lagarde Drive. Police say a 18-year-old man was handling the gun when it went off. Neighbors say the girl was hit in the head. Police questioned the 18-year-old and they're still investigating. They believe this shooting was an accident. Only on 13 News Now, a couple is asking for the public's help, but not for themselves. They found a dog on Black Friday that was badly hurt. They say x-rays showed the dog was shot twice. They've taken it in and gotten it treatment. Chinu Her has been following this story, and he tells us how the dog is doing. After a day of Black Friday shopping, Jennifer Morin and her husband Kyle came home to find something they didn't expect. As we were bringing in the bags, my husband pointed out that he saw a dog, looked unattended, so he starts calling the dog over. As it got closer, that's when they noticed. She was done. She was done. The dog wasn't in good shape. Right away we noticed there was blood on the neck, blood on the head. She was shaking because it was about 32 degrees. Jennifer and Kyle took her in and cared for her until animal control was able to get involved. She says the dog saw an emergency vet. They later found the wounds were worse than what they thought. They didn't actually find out she was shot twice until about two days ago when they noticed the lumps were not going down after she saw the vet. Jennifer says the four-year-old dog had a successful surgery. Now the couple wants to find out who did this and why. All they know is a chip traced the dog back to Florida, but even that didn't help much. She's chipped, but they never updated it. So it go, the chip goes back to the original shelter. The chip IDs her as Shadow, the wounded dog who wandered across the Morins. This Black Friday, their best find found them. My husband. He's in love. I love her. She's a good dog. Still has great life in her, like so much spirit, so much life. And Jennifer tells me the dog is at the Norfolk Animal Care Center right now. And I did reach out tonight, but their offices were closed. We'll be sure to stay on top of this and bring you more when we get more information. She knew her 13 news now. Two shootings in two days in Chesapeake. Both incidents happened around the same time and not far from each other. Police say a man was shot just before six o'clock on Peter Road off of Wingfield Road. We're told the man has serious injuries. Police have no information, they tell us, on a possible suspect. The other shooting happened on Wingfield Drive. Chesapeake police say a man was shot and killed after three people broke into his home and stole things from him. The man allegedly followed the suspects outside, and that's when they shot him several times. Tonight, one person is in custody. Police have not released the other suspect's information. 
The House has approved a Republican bill making it easier for gun owners to legally carry concealed weapons across state lines. The bill is the first gun legislation in Congress since the recent mass shootings. The bill is backed by the National Rifle Association. Opponents, mostly Democrats, say the bill could endanger public safety by overriding state gun laws. Worldwide concern tonight after President Trump announced Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and that he wants to move the U.S. Embassy there. Tonight, emotions ranging from anger to fear. ABC Serena Marshall has more on the reactions from world leaders. Good evening. It was a signature that took mere seconds but reversed decades of U.S. policy. President Trump declaring Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and his plans to start the process to move the embassy there from Tel Aviv. He said this was simply a recognition of reality. Today we finally acknowledge the obvious, that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. In 1995, a resolution was passed to do just that, but it had been waived by all previous American presidents due to fears it would spark violence in the region, making any peace talks impossible. Already, various Palestinian factions have called for three days of rage. No other country in the world has its embassy in Jerusalem. Widespread condemnation and concern from the Pope to regional leaders. Palestinian leaders saying it could lead to wars that will never end. The Turkish foreign minister called it a grave mistake. And European leaders dismayed. Britain's prime minister called it unhelpful to the peace process. And French President Macron saying it was regrettable. And eight countries, including the UK and France, have called for an emergency UN Security Council meeting. Across the Middle East, protests. Palestinians burning the US and Israeli flag. Israel, though, applauded the decision and said there is no peace that doesn't include Jerusalem recognized as the capital, a belief President Trump agrees with. We are no closer to a lasting peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. It would be folly to assume that repeating the exact same formula would now produce a different or better result. The president says the U.S. is still deeply committed to helping find lasting peace in the Middle East, and the vice president is heading to the region in the coming days. But the Palestinian president said this is a declaration that the U.S. has withdrawn from the peace process. Serena Marshall, ABC News at the White House. Another tough night for a community in North Carolina. Today, investigators positively identified a body found in a muddy creek as the remains of three-year-old Mariah Woods. She was reported missing from her home last month. Mariah's body was returned to her family tonight for a visitation. Friends and strangers alike showed up to pay their respects. It hit my heart. How can something happen to a beautiful little girl like that? Hopefully, it, uh, that other people learn to just be more watchful of their children. The mother's live-in boyfriend has been charged in connection with Mariah's death. Earl Kimry previously served time for theft and assault. Obstruction of justice charges against a Portsmouth school board member have been dropped. Police had accused Lakeisha Atkinson of getting in the way of an investigation back in September. An officer says two people were in police custody over a stolen vehicle. The officer says Atkinson asked one person their age. She was arrested when she would not back away. Tonight, Atkinson released a statement saying she understands the complexity of day-to-day -day operations of being a police officer. We have to collaborate together so our neighborhoods can be safe. Next time you get your state inspection sticker for your car, the sticker will go in a different spot on your windshield. Take a look at that right there on your screen. State police say the stickers will be placed in the bottom left corner of the driver's side instead of the center bottom of the windshield. Why that change? We're told it's because some car manufacturers now offer crash avoidance technology, which uses the center of the windshield. So the stickers will be moved so the technology can work properly. Existing stickers will stay where they are until you are issued a new one for 2019.